y'all. Let's crack. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using a stretched artist canvas that I got at the Dollar Tree. They come three to a pack and they cost $5. I'm also going to be using one of these wallpaper pieces that I got at the Dollar Tree. A piece of foam board, I got mine at the Dollar Tree. One wooden S, which stands for my last name. I think it originally came from Hobby Lobby, but a project got broken on the move, and so I'm going to reuse this one. Some lamb's ear that I got from Hobby Lobby. They put it on sale every other week for 50% off, and it's in the wedding section. Some two and a half inch wired ribbon. I think these came from Michael's. Some Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. Some wooden beads that I got at Hobby Lobby. And finally, some jute twine and my hot glue gun. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this canvas from the frame, and I'm just going to discard it, although you could reuse it in another project. I decided I wouldn't be using it here because I'm using that wallpaper. And it just takes a little time in my scissors, and I'll just pull that completely off. And then I am going to remove all of the staples using a screwdriver and some pliers and I'm going to get all of them out. I'm not going to be using this side. It's going to be the back, but I want my foam board to be able to go on nice and flat. So I am going to remove all of those staples and discard them. Before I paint my frame, I'm going to go ahead and lay it out on this foam board and I'm going to draw around it with a pencil and I'll just use my Zacto knife and cut that out. And for my frame, I'm going to paint it with this Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. I'm going to paint all of the edges and the sides and the front. I was impressed that this frame actually has kind of a beveled edge. It was a much nice, nicer frame inside than I thought it was going to be. And then I'm going to go in and paint the S. And it also has this nice beveled edge with the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink as well. And I guess I got lucky, but none of these items needed a second coat. They just needed to dry really well. And now I'm using one of my jot markers, and I'm going to go in and color the edges of my board all the way around. You could do it with paint as well. I just didn't want to take the time for it to dry when to move on on this project. So I did use my permanent marker to cover in the edges. Now I'm just drawing a line on my wallpaper here so that I can cut that out to the size of my board. And yes, it won't be quite as wide on one of the measurements, but it doesn't really matter because the frame will hide it. And we'll just peel that off and line it up as best as I can in the center of this board and just smooth it out. And now I'm going to come in with my heavy duty stapler and I'm stapling my foam board to the back. If you're going to use this on a porch that gets a lot of wind or rain, you may want to use a piece of thin board like a piece of Luan instead of this foam board. Since this is going to be hanging on my front door, I wanted to use some beads and twine to make a hanger for this project. So I just decided kind of on a random pattern and I'm stringing on half the beads. And as I string them, I'm laying the opposite pattern onto the lid that came with the beads. And that way, once I get the first half on, that second half is a piece of cake easy peasy and done and i'm just going to tie some knots on the end of my twine and i'm going to use my heavy duty stapler to staple it to the top of my project and i'll also use a little hot glue to secure my twine as well and cut off the excess piece there and once that is finished let's flip that over and yes my string could have been a little bit longer but i didn't want it to be the highlight of my project so let's make a simple bow i'm going to take two pieces of ribbon. These are the two I chose that are contrasting and I cut them at 28 inches each. Then I'm just going to come to that center fold and make a very simple shoestring bow, if you will, just folding it over. And then I'll fold the second piece as well and place that right down on top of the first bow. And then once I do that, I'm going to pleat it in the middle then I'll take a piece of twine and twist it around my ribbon. And that's how I'm going to hold it together. I'll just do that several times. Then I'll just tie it at the back with a couple of knots to hold it snugly in place. Cut off that excess string. Give it a nice fluffing. Dovetail those ends. And with a little hot glue, I'm going to attach it to the top middle of the frame. 
Then I'm just going to take some of this lamb's ear and glue it underneath the bow to the right and the left just to dress it up a bit more and give it that farmhouse feel and look. And one more fluffing of that bow. And with that, the project is almost complete. All we have to do now is center our S using some hot glue. I'm just going to glue it right down to my piece. And with that, the project is finally complete. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe below. Make sure you ring the bell when it comes up and YouTube will let you know every time we upload new content. We upload videos four days per week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these 10-inch wood rounds that I got at Hobby Lobby. This cheetah print scrapbook paper that I also got from Hobby Lobby. This wooden word that says welcome, I got it at Hobby Lobby and it's really thick y'all, it only cost $1.49. Some faux boxwood, it came from Walmart. Some Mod Podge. Some white Waverly chalk paint some black acrylic paint, some apple barrel acrylic paint in the color Territorial Beige, some wired ribbon in widths of two and a half inch and one and a half inch, and finally one zip tie and my hot glue gun. I'm going to use the scrapbook paper as the bottom part of my wood round and I just turned it over on the back and I made sure that I'm cutting about a four and a half inch piece. So not quite half of what the wooden surface would be. And then I'll just cut that out with my scissors. And then I draw a line at the top of where it's going to go on my wood round, kind of as a guide to place my next line. And that line I'm placing two inches above the first line. Then I'll just use a little painter's tape right on top of that line. And I'm going to paint the top part of this wood piece first. And that's going to be in that territorial beige acrylic paint this is a flat finish paint, and I just love how the color goes with that scrapbook paper. And then I gotta come in and paint the word welcome, and I'm going to use my white chalk paint. And y'all, this did take quite some time, and it took at least two coats, maybe three and four in some places. Getting in all those nooks and crannies, honestly, it was not a lot of fun. And I made sure it was nice and dry before I placed down two more pieces of my painter's tape. And then I come in with my black acrylic paint, and it is a flat finish as well, y'all. And I'm going to fill in the center part of our wood round. And I am relieved to say that when I took off the painter's tape, I had nice crisp lines. I did not have any paint that bled underneath. Now I'm just going to come in with some Mod Podge and I'm going to place a nice even coat on all of this raw wood that is left. Once I get it like I want it, I'm going to smooth down my scrapbook paper just using my fingers. You can also use some saran wrap on top if you're afraid you will tear your paper. But I did not have any problems getting this one on straight and even. And then once it's dry, I'm going to put a coat of Mod Podge right on top to seal it nicely. I'm going to use this super glue wood glue that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to spread it onto the back of the word welcome using a popsicle stick so that I get a nice even coat and then I'll just center it right there on the black part and put something heavy on it and let it dry for several hours. Now it's time to make a bow. The first color I'm going to use is this plaid that is black and natural and I'm going to make about four inch tails and two and a half inch loops. I'm going to make sure that I place one loop up and one loop down and one tail up and one tail down. And then I'll just cut that off once I've got it in place at again, about four inches. And then I'm going to do the opposite on the second ribbon, but I'm again doing the same size, two and a half inch loops and four inch tails. For the third ribbon, I'm going to come in a little bit smaller than what I did on the first two. 
And for the last ribbon, it's our signature piece. So I'm going to make the loops smaller than all of the three previous colors, but I'm going to do two loops on each side. And again, I'm keeping that tail up, tail down look. To cinch our bow nice and tightly, I'm going to use a zip tie. I'm going to bring it around the center. Then I'll take my ribbon off my posts, my easy bow maker, and then I'll just pull it nice and snug and cut off the excess with my scissors. And every bow needs a lot of fluffing. You need to dovetail those ends. Some of them have to be trimmed a little shorter than what I cut them, but it's easier to take it off than it is to add it back on. So once I get it like I want it, and I could play with a bow all day, y'all. That's kind of how it turned out. I'm going to put some hot glue right in the center top. And then I'm going to hold it down a little bit and make sure that my glue really sets up nicely. And to place a hanger on the back, I'm using a soda can tab. You've seen me do this before. I'm just using some hot glue. And I'll let that set really well again. And once we got that in place, all we have to do is put in our greenery. We're using that faux boxwood, two pieces on each side. And I'm just gluing it right underneath the bow. And once it's secure, that will be the end of this project. This is a project I've been intending to make all winter. And finally, I found the time to do it. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these small wood frames that I got at the Dollar Tree. One of these wooden bunnies that I got in a package at Michael's, I believe, y'all. Some scrapbook paper that originally came from Hobby Lobby. Some of this microfiber cloth that I got at the Dollar Tree. One of these ribbon roses that I got at Walmart. Some pink velvet ribbon that I got on Amazon. Some white Waverly chalk paint. Some Mod Podge and my hot glue gun, and that's all. So the first thing I'm going to do is deconstruct this frame. I'm going to take off the little hanger that's on the back and I'll just save that to reuse. And then I'm going to come in and pop off the back. And because my scrapbook paper is really thick, I'm not going to remove this orange and white paper, but I am going to take off that football. And now I'm going to take a baby wipe and my Waverly white chalk paint. Y'all, this is very watered down Waverly paint because I like the stain that's on this frame, but I want it to have more of that shabby sheet look. I guess you could say I'm giving it a whitewash finish. This was the paint that was left at the bottom of this jar. And y'all know that you can't use all of it because it gets so thick and clumpy. But if you thin it out, you can use it in a different project in a different way. So I'm leaving it thicker in some areas and lighter in others. It's just personal preference, y'all. I'm going to trace around my background onto my scrapbook paper and I'm going to make sure I capture as much of the lighter color as possible on the paper because the edges are darker. And then once I get that, I'm just going to trim it out with my scissors. Now I'm going to come in with a little Mod Podge and place a nice even coat here on the back of this backing. Now I'm going to smooth down my scrapbook paper onto this backing. I didn't worry about the orange showing through because this scrapbook paper is really thick. And now once it's dry, I'm going to place a coat of Mod Podge on top because I'm going to be gluing some items to this. And I'm just taking a piece of that fabric and cut out a piece. I'm going to place glue on the back of my bunny here. And then I'll just smooth that fabric down to that wooden bunny making sure it's attached at all of the edges because that makes it easier to cut out. And I just come in with my scissors and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut close to the edge of the bunny. I like this fabric from the Dollar Tree because it gives the bunny a fuzzy appearance. And now we'll just start assembling things. I'm going to place this little backing back into the frame and I'll also use some hot glue at each corner to make sure it stays secure. 
And once I have the top up, I'm going to place down my bunny with just a little more hot glue. I'm going to make sure I center him from top to bottom and side to side. I'm going to take my ribbon rose and place that on the bunny tail area. Gives him a little more color and a little more depth and a little more pink, which y'all know I love. Then I'm going to take that velvet ribbon and I'm just going to fashion it into a really simple bow y'all. I place a little flat back pearl in the center of it. Just a little more window dressing. Little glue on the side there. Place down our bow and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye y'all!